Yeah, my name is Marcio, and I'm here to share with you all a solution or various solutions to stop food waste. So, in order to understand food waste, I would like to give a brief history of how we humans came to this problem that we are facing today and what is the origin of it. We go to this simple phrase that humans are smart. From the very beginning, they know how to preserve food. So, if we go back to prehistorical times and soon as we invented fire, we already knew how to sun dry some, some vegetables, some meat. But soon as we invented fire, we knew also how to smoke food. Uh, now, we started to preserve food as humans because of a need. Not because of a niche market or because it tastes better, but because we needed to survive long periods of winter without a crop. So we started to be a revolutionary, I would say, for the age that these techniques appeared. And we really knew how to do it in order to pass the winter, not just for ourselves, but we started also how to know how to preserve food for our animals. So we evolved into this knowing how to preserve food and we found new techniques. We learned how to preserve with salt. We learned how to preserve with smoke, as I was saying before. We came to these amazing products that here in Spain, they are actually very, very appreciated. I love a jamón. I can't avoid without eating it. And uh, so we also learned how to preserve with honey. It's used still today in many, many recipes and in many countries. You can also use vinegar. So basically, there's no doubt we know how to preserve food. But then something went wrong. So from knowing how to preserve food to what it came the days of industrialization where food was starting to be produced in mass, uh, it was not just for a need. We started to produce in terms of companies that want to achieve success. And they really calculate the amount of products that they make with an expire date and they can afford to lose a percentage of it. They already have it assumed by the moment they produce that a part of that is going to go to waste. This has been happening in our daily life for the last 70 years, at least. Not just the way we package food and preserve it, but the way we start to really overpackage food. So it was really easy to go to a farmer or a supermarket in 40s, 50s, 60s and have a variety of fruits, vegetables, meats with very little packaging. Suddenly, everything we see these days, it's overpackaged. So this was smoked and then it was kept and then it was wrapped. So here is like four products that were unnecessary for this food to arrive to my table. We continue into this and we went into making marketing. So now we sell products that actually the packaging and the branding costed more for the company than the actual food we're going to eat. We went really far. As you can see, we, we do all kinds of products for all kinds of people. <laughs> uh, is it needed? Well, it's debatable. So some of them are quite funny, really, but the actual truth is this is what we are living. So we've known for millennium how to preserve food, but we had a need to preserve that food. So that food was actually for us to bear the winter. It was us for us to bear a bed crop, to be safe that all in our house can eat in bad times. Now these days, things change drastically. As you can see here in the graphic, the last one is 2018, and this is the amount of food that is going to waste. Now this is a serious problem. As I was saying before, it will be so easy to go pick your grapes or your apples, and now it's all over packaging, which creates, I would say, a few problems, not to say a lot of problems. So number one is the amount of waste of products that were unneeded to package our food that end up in the bin. Now, we end up selling all that bin to third world countries where we all like to go in holidays, but we also sell them our rubbish, which ends up in this kind of uh, atmosphere, uh, which is our atmosphere. So to see a problem far away from, now, from us normally doesn't have such a strong impact in us as to see it very near. So I guess governments found an easy way to get rid of it, but now it's coming up. 
So all these measurements that were done uh, to avoid us to perceive all this waste is now in our face. If it was not enough, we are still fighting world hunger. So we're living in 2018 and we still have a problem of hunger. Now, if we all know that a third of all food is wasted, and I tell you honestly, you just need to put in Google food and waste, and you will come with all kinds of data. All countries know that food is going to waste every single day, and there's nothing that they can do about it. Now, there's some new initiatives, which we will go down to it, but this is the data that I wanted to really show you. So this really shows us a reality that there's more wasted food than people are hungry. So us, as in Mood Bites, we try to look into a solution using technology. So I was, as Jose was said, I work with 3D food printing, and it's really something fantastic. It's like art. You put the food and you make really nice designs and it tastes amazing. But I found that the process of all of this, I was also buying the apple that goes in the solar film and to make a puree out of it, put it in the printer. So I'm like, wow, so I have a revolutionary technology and I haven't brought any solution apart from wanting to make money as a company. So I stop there and I start looking into how can I use the food in this printer without leaving more trace, without really damaging more the planet. How can I find a solution for this? So I went to Mercabarna, I made a partnership with, with a company there, and they start giving me a lot of uh, food that didn't look so good. It's not that it was even about to expire, it just didn't look the most beautiful. It's like these days for you to arrive as an apple to, to the supermarket, you need to do a makeup test. So it's not as easy for the farmer just to produce his vegetables and his fruits. He now needs to really worry about how they look like. If we have this problem and we have all of this food, so I think we need to find a circular solution for this. Some countries, like France, for example, recently implemented a solution for it. So they banned supermarkets that throw their food. They made a protocol that supermarkets cannot ban their food anymore. It needs to be recovered and given into charities, to a World Bank. But they face the same problem. Once it arrives there, food is something that has such a short time of, of, of expired date that once we collect all of that food, first of all, we need a huge space. Imagine all Barcelona, if we could now collect the waste of all the supermarkets just in the metropole of Barcelona today, we will probably fill up half Mercabarna. What do we do with that? If is one is expiring in three hours, one is expiring in three days, one is expiring in four days, how do we serve that for the people who need? Plus, on top of it, there's the whole problem as we talked about the packaging. So this food that we are now supposedly collecting in France, that we are collecting in many countries, all these beautiful initiatives that are really needed in terms of recovering food, is the food really arrived to the unprivileged? The answer is no. It does arrive to a category of unprivileged people, but it's still in the surrounding areas. So it will arrive to people in need of food in Barcelona, but if we compare that to the image we previously said of somebody starving in Africa, there's a big difference between not having enough and not having nothing. So there's a solution. There's, there's light, as we say, in the end of the tunnel. We can, we can approach this and really make a difference, make a mark. And in 2018, as a human species, we can say we know how to preserve, so let's do it better and let's make it efficient so it can solve world hunger. How can we do this? This is the healthiest time in human history. The GDPs of the country, I mean, I, I see so many graphics of economics that is mind-blowing. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, dollar, cash, euro, it's like money everywhere. But there's people starving and we keep on buying more than what we need in terms of food. Uh, apart from all the other gadgets and all that it is the technology and everything that involves our day-to-day -day life. So, as you see here, powered food millennials love it. I don't know if you are aware of two, three brands like Uwell or Mana that are already introducing like superfoods that have been previously dehydrated or freeze-dried to achieve this powder and then combine 12 ingredients or nine ingredients that have a reaction in your body that actually allows to produce serotonin, so you are a more happy person. No more going to the doctor for depression. How do we do freeze-dried food? So it's a technology that's been around for more than 20 years, uh, actually a little bit more, 
and is serving a very niche market. So right now in the space station, they are eating this food. It's the only way to arrive food to the space station is freeze drying it. Number one, because it reduces the weight 60%. I don't know if you know, but astronauts are only allowed to bring one picture with them because they have a package of weight and in terms of priorities, they allow them to bring one picture together with every little thing they can bring because of the price to lift something from the planet to there, it's really expensive. So this technology was amazing for the space revolution, for us to arrive to Mars like Elon Musk so much envisions, we will need this. But why are we just so much up there if we are living here? And we can solve the problem here in this problem, in this planet, using this technology. So if I can get a pear or an apple and give it 25 years of, of expired date, knowing that I'm still conserving all the proteins and the nutrients on it, plus I don't need a chain of cold to storage it, then it's a huge revolution and we have it. Dehydrated food is pretty much a similar technology done in a cheaper way. So it will be in a scale of valuing the nutrients and the components of food. We will decide if we freeze dry it or if we dehydrate it. Bearing in mind what is the end use is that we increase the date of the food, the expired date, and it's cheaper to transport, cheaper to storage and no need for fridge. So our concept goes to New World Food Bank that is powered by blockchain and ID device. So what I mean with this is you can imagine now in Barcelona an area that all the supermarkets, all the restaurants and inclusive every single one of you could go and dump the food you don't need. Bearing in mind that we will register the moment you bring this food to us, is it an individual or a supermarket or a food chain, we will register the amount of food you've donated to a blockchain tag and it will be associated with your virtual ID. So you will get something like karma points. When that food goes and feeds somebody in the world, you will get some beep, 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 some points. And you will be reassured that what you donated in that day has got upcycled into a new product and went to feed somebody else, or it just came back to the market that we all need in our daily lives, because these products don't necessarily need to be only for third world countries, although it's the ones more in need. This is some of the products that are already in the market, the powders that I was talking to you about, and this is what will happen to uh, a chimpanzee if he would be able to preserve food. From the times that we learned how to preserve food humans, if other mammals would learn it, they will be now also in the space station because they will have much more time to evolve. So this is small techniques of dehydration, Obviously, what I'm talking is a large-scale technique of dehydration, and this is food printing. So one thing is the way we dehydrate and lyophilize, and the second one is how we use those powders. So we can use them for 3D food printers that will trace people with malnutrition in the, da the daily lives that we live. We can have personalized diets for people with, with uh, diseases, that food will come to help them through to the printing. We can really personalize what you eat. It can make amazing designs and it can feed 8% of the world that has dysphagia. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's increasing every day more the people with dysphagia. You can have dysphagia because you became older and you start to have a, a problem chewing. So all your cords here are a bit saturated and it's not easy for you to chew or unfortunately because you develop a cancer or any other disease that doesn't allow you to chew the ingredients as you did before. Then it becomes really sad and boring to eat from a can, so 3D printing can be a solution for this. Now if that ingredient is coming from something that was going to waste, it's a whole added value. To sum up, there's many wasting food initiatives around us. There's many things being implemented. What I don't see is a circular solution that every single individual, corporation or company could adopt it without having extra costs. So if a company now wants to save food, they have to implement new resources by, for example, this dehydrating machine, but that will serve only one company. The company next door needs to buy another one and so on and so on and so on. So we end up, up with all Barcelona full of machines when we only need this one plant. 
So our goal is to create a world protocol where every city can have this upcycling, recycling plant, not just of food, because we can also do with the shells of the food, with the skin of the potato, with the leftovers of coffee, with the leftovers of beer, you can do 3D print filaments. So all together, we have the technologies to face the problem and really come up with a new solution that is not just feeding third world country, but is also bringing new materials that are biodegradable for everyday life and therefore finish with all this plastic. I finish that I really believe we are all one and if our acts every day are based in this feeling, we will be a much better society. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.